This video is sponsored by Rise of Gunpla, the first band-day shop in France. Use my discount code Nico Soratos to get 5% off your next purchase. Links down below. Hi, I'm Nico and welcome to my channel. So in this video, we'll cover the tools and materials you'll need and I'll give you the step-by-step -step instructions on how to get the best results when hand-painting your Gunpla models. Hand painting may seem daunting at first, but with the right tools and techniques, anyone can achieve great results. So let's get started. So first, you'll need paint. Acrylic paint is a popular choice for hand painting. You can use Vallejo, Citadel, or Hyro Paints, AK, Green Stuff World, and any brand you prefer. Next, you'll need brushes. Kolinsky Sable brushes and any natural bristle brushes are always a better choice than synthetic brushes. So if you have the means to get them, I would recommend it. But synthetic brushes, a good quality one, can do a fine job as well. So for painting gunpla parts, especially master grades, um, since we're working with large areas compared to miniatures, I suggest getting a number 2 and a number 4. You also need a palette to mix your colors. You can use an old ceramic dish or a plastic palette, but you've probably seen in my videos that I use a wet palette. This is because I live in the Philippines and the hot weather can dry out my paint quickly. So a wet palette helps keep my paint fresh and workable for longer periods of time. Also, a jar or a cup with clean water to rinse your brushes in between paint changes is important. Lastly, you need a primer to prepare the plastic surface and a top coat to protect your paint job. Now that you have your tools ready, let's get to painting. I've done some experimenting before making this video, and what I found is the best way is to use a spray can or rattle can for priming. This is if you have the means to do it. I use Bosni Spray Can Gray Primer, which you can find in hardware stores here in the Philippines. Hand painting primer is also possible, but it takes a long time and it's hard to get a finish without brush marks. It requires at least 3 or even 4 coats to get it even, and you can't apply it thickly so it's time consuming, especially when you have to hand paint the primer on so many gunpla parts. But like I said, not everyone can use spray cans due to their living space or other reasons. So it might take you longer um, to hand paint primer, but it is doable. So as you can see here, um, I did not really clean the parts that we're using. These are scrap parts. Um, so you might see knob marks and scratches and all of that. Uh, which is fine because this is just for a tutorial. And I'm not really gonna use these parts for anything else. Moving on, now that the parts are primed, you should have your paints ready. I'm gonna be using Vallejo Game Color Magic Blue. Uh, game Extra Opaque Heavy Red and Game Color Gold Yellow. When thinning the paint, remember to add water gradually until you've reached the desired consistency. You don't want the paint to be too runny as it may cause drips and pulling, nor do you want it to be too thick as it may result in brush strokes and clumps. Uh, this is especially important when you're using a plastic palette. Um, because for me, I'm using a wet palette, so I don't really have to add water because there's already water on my palette. So aim for a consistency that flows smoothly and evenly. Additionally, if you're using metallic or pearlescent paints, you may need to use a specific medium to thin them down as water may affect their shine and sparkle. So what you have to remember when, when it comes to hand painting is that different colors, different brands, different paints all have different pigments, binders, and consistencies, which can affect how they mix, how they dry, and how you thin them. To thin out the acrylic paint, you'll need some water. It's important to thin the paint to a consistency that's easy to work with. 
I like to use distilled drinking water or mineral water because tap water can contain impurities that might affect the quality of the paint. So first things first before we get to actually painting, here's a tip to avoid hand fatigue when hand painting. You should hold the brush like a pencil or a pen with your fingers near the bristles. Don't grip it too tight, rather hold it lightly and firmly like you would hold a pencil. This will give you more control over the brush's movement. So next, I dip my paintbrush into the water, just enough to get it wet, and then load the paintbrush with a small amount of paint. Avoid letting paint reach the ferrule or the metal part of the brush. Uh, this is to keep the bristle intact and prevent damage. So use your ring finger as a guide just like when scribing to stop and give you more control when painting. So use gentle even pressure when applying the paint to avoid bending the bristles and forcing paint up into the ferrule. This is especially important when painting small details or intricate areas. Much like with scribing, I always say, let the tool do the work. You don't have to extract force when it comes to hand painting. There is no ratio when it comes to thinning paints for hand painting. That's probably one of the most frequently asked questions. Uh, what's the ratio? How much water should I put? But there's really no set ratio for it. What works for one color doesn't necessarily work for others. It's not one for all, all for one. So you have to study and get familiar with each color and how to thin them. So it's important to take the time to test different ratios until you find the one that works for you. As an artist, it's essential to learn the properties of each color and how to manipulate them to achieve the desired results. So after painting the first coat, the first ugly coat because it's very thinned down and you can still see the unevenness of the primer and the paint, let it dry completely before adding additional coats. I like to use a hair dryer or a blower to speed up the drying process. So once you've covered the part with paint, use the brush to smooth out the surface by using smooth even strokes in the same direction. Avoid using back and forth motions while painting or the paint will look streaky. Also, when adding more paint, use thin layers and build up the color gradually. There are some colors like yellow and red and oranges that takes a lot of time, takes a lot of coats to get an even finish. But you really have to be patient with it because if you apply it too thick, um, it can result in a sloppy finish. Finally, when you're done painting, clean your brushes with water and soap or a brush cleaner. Rinse the brush thoroughly to remove any paint or debris and reshape the bristles with your fingers before letting them dry. This will ensure that your brushes remain in good condition and are ready for future use, especially if you have Kolinsky or natural bristle brushes. It's important to take good care of them because they're not affordable. <laughs> so in summary, hand painting gunpla can be a rewarding and relaxing experience, but it does require some practice and skill. By following the steps, you can achieve a smooth and uniform finish that will make your gunpla look amazing. But I want you guys to look and you'll see that the painting itself is actually good. There are no visible brush marks, which is what we're trying to achieve with head painting. We're trying to achieve an almost airbrush-like finish without using an airbrush. So yeah, I think we got good results. Um, and let me know what you guys think in the comment down below. Thanks for watching! If you found it helpful, you might consider checking out my Patreon account or my Ko-Fi page to show your support. Links all down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tips and tutorials on Gunpla building. I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye!